here we are. That's right. Finally got those those Jawas kicked out of the shop, and we've got this thing rolling. Glad to see all, all of you all here with us in the chat tonight as we are ready for another episode of Legends Look Back. Because, of course, last week we were not able to do a live show because uh, as soon as we wrapped the previous live episode and we were making plans for the next one, Rick messaged us and said, Hey, uh, are we going to have a live show the night of Halloween? And I said, Dang it! <laughs> no, <laughs> I've got plans. My plans? You're going to hear about them in just a minute because I did something Star Wars-y. But first, we have got to recognize an award-winning costumer in the group. Okay, um, for those of you who don't know, Rick Grace, our producer, is a multi Award winner? What's the? Uh, he's racking up the hardware, folks. Rick, tell the good folks about your amazing history as a repeat champion of uh, your church trick or treat, uh, trunk or treat costuming contest. Okay, so yeah, I, it's true. I, I have uh, I've won some some hardware over the years <laughs> for trunk or treats. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you can't hear that, audio listeners. He's wearing like six medals right now. You I wonder mean, what happened to Chewie's medal? Rick I stole it. it. I stole it. Yeah, <laughs> he should wear a better costume. Just saying. Oh, so Rick, uh, you you were the guy that mugged everybody after the ceremony. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, I you know I didn't grow up in like the in a in a I guess a home where nerddom was okay and mm -hmm. so I never really had like cosplay opportunities not that it was discouraged just was never never a topic for our family or anything like that so never grew up going to any kind of conferences or any kind of uh conventions or anything that was what cosplay conferences you know I'm a, I'm a convention sorry uh <laughs> see it's just how how illiterate of that world I am and so for me, like Halloween was the, the one time of the year to be my weird, normal self and wear a costume and, and get into character. I've always loved theater and acting. And so really getting into character is fun for me. And so, yeah, I, I love when we have like a, a Halloween trunk or treat thing. And because most normies out there don't get in that mindset, you know, uh, they accept me that one one day of the year. So I'm I just go picturing you, Rick, it. sitting on an airplane person next to you says so business or pleasure <laughs> and you say yeah yes. i'm going i'm on my way to a conference a cosplay conference <laughs> oh boy yeah my yeah. suitcase is full of jedi robes that's who among us i mean i've been there let's be yep. honest yep. <laughs> well rick rick it is astounding the the level of effort that you'll put in i'm like man what if rick would put that much effort into our show I oh mean, dude i mean i <laughs> It is astounding the work that you have been able to do. I cannot tell you the number of people I have showed your um, your redneck Luke Skywalker uh, outfit from a few years ago with yep. Farmer Tan Luke. Yeah, um, unintentionally redneck. I'm starting to think that redneck is just my true identity. It comes out once a year. <laughs> no, every no, that, that's your costuming secret. Every costume but redneck. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's right. <laughs> Star Wars, but redneck. <laughs> Redneck, but way more redneck than you would Lobot imagine. with beer cans. All right, so I, I have I have some photos. You want to do some show and tell? Yeah, man. Uh, let's see the goods. All right, let's see. So uh, this year at a trunk or treat, you were yeah, what, I was audio listeners, uh, a hockey player, but specifically, I was I'm a Nashville Predators fan, and in Nashville, we're a bunch of rednecks. But when you're a hockey fan, you're a predneck. And so <laughs> there's my my uh, it's a reverse retro jersey. You know, a lot of this actually, actually, all of this was stuff in my possession, except for the only thing I had to buy in this was the tooth wax for my blacked out teeth. Uh, um, <laughs> but everything amazing. else I owned and like most of the hockey gear I use weekly. So at least I've got that going for me. Right. So so you didn't spend uh, any money on this costume, right? I spent six bucks for, six for the tooth bucks wax on this costume. And you're a hockey player. Uh huh. So I guess you could say. Well, I mean, I spent a lot more on the jersey and stuff, but not for the costume. You right, know, right, like, right. So, so you spent at least a low budget hockey costume, which you called a predneck. I've mm -hmm. got another name for it. Are you ready for this? All right, go for it. Uh, I guess you could say, Rick, that you're a cheapskate. Ah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I workshopped that on some friends earlier tonight. Oh, and, that's so and good. They they said that's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. I told oh, it to man. a three year a three year old, maybe a four year old, and he distinctly did not get it. 
which was <laughs> it was crickets, straight <laughs> crickets. Um, well, well done, Rick. Congratulations once again. Should put this unruly fan in YouTube jail. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jacob in the chat says boo boo preds. Can I? Um, uh, I got some more real quick. Red wings to... fan or something. Yeah, Go ahead. hurricanes. I've got more photos if you want to see my greatest hits real quickly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is the famous one last year. This one, I don't know if I'd ever be able to top again, but this is the original redneck to the max. Uh, my sign says, please excuse the drunk in my trunk. Uh, Mary <laughs> Xmas and Xmas is scratched out and Halloween is put in there. And <laughs> the best part about this setup, this is another year where I bought nothing for this. Oh, man, um, the jorts are bad. The George, everything. <laughs> I, I I shaved. I I cut the shirt up. Let the let the belly hang out. It's bad. It's bad. But I bought nothing for this. And the reason we decided to do this was because I didn't have time to clean up my car, and that was just the crap in my car. And so I said, let's turn this into a, a theme. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we should start a podcast, Rick, called called uh, Redneck Roundhouse. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Redneck Roundhouse. <laughs> or the junk in my trunk, either one. No, um, no, not that one. Not that one? Okay. Uh, so, not that one. There's the famous uh, Farmer Tan Luke. That's awful. And, <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, yeah. uh, actually, if you're not in the Discord, listeners, pop on over to the Legends Look Back Discord channel because people have been Photoshopping Redneck Rick oh, into, no. into different scenes in Star Wars. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I haven't been there in a while, so that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Red then, uh, Six standing by. <laughs> a couple years ago we were uh as a family we did like a pirate theme which was actually like store-bought costumes so i'm the least proud of it but we did a good job um oh yeah. and that was fun i actually have my grandfather has an accordion and so i was playing sea shanties on the accordion that's um, so baller i i go all in like everything is in a theme i build a whole world when i do drunks i couldn't find it in time but i another year we were um we have Dalmatians, and so my wife and I were Pongo, or no, we were Roger and Anita from 101 Dalmatians movie, and our, our dogs were Pongo and Pretty Dea. Before that would have been kids. funny if you did it the so. opposite way. Where we, we want to. We want to. the owners. Yeah. Well, One year we will, for sure. Everybody give Rick a round of applause for, once again, Thank you. showing Thank up you. all of the competition. Thank you. Yep. How, yep. Many, how many times have you won this thing, man? Well, it's different churches, too. That's the thing. Is I, I I love that you go to different churches in order to win their costume. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like Different churches I've worked at. <laughs> when I moved from my last church, I I you know I won there. Right, right, right. Like, hey, guys, this? I'm Rick. I'm here to kick your butts. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, I had one guy say, this thing is rigged. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> Um, okay, I got second place one year, and I think the first place was like a blow up costume or something. Jerry um, rigged, I know, but yeah, so he went, I, his preacher is named know. Jerry, so Jerry might have rigged it. <laughs> That's true. I think his wife was a, was a, a judge this year, so um, might have been, but anyway, it's it's good, good fun. Yeah, I love it. Now, uh, Freddie, I saw you were out trick or treating. Did you have a good time? Did you get some Milky Way Midnights, the undisputed <laughs> best candy of all time? I did, I did. So uh, I started off the night with my, uh, what is it? The it's the it's the black stormtrooper, the uh, shadow trooper. Had my shadow trooper armor on, and it was a little too hot here in the desert. So I had to straight over to my uh, trusty NASA outfit, which is just a flight suit and a bunch of uh, patches of projects that I worked on, and that was it. Uh, Fantastic. And, yeah, it was super basic. I had a little fishbowl and so I jealous. made it into a, a helmet, like a astronaut helmet. So that, that's all I did. It was it was a lot of fun. Wait, you, I, did you what happened to the fish, Freddy? Uh, Don't tell me you flushed him. It's probably about this big now. <laughs> uh, about maybe six yards. If we're going oh, imperial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that fish is long gone. It, it's been uh probably gone for about a decade now <laughs> ah, gotcha <laughs> yeah hey if you have any extra patches send them my way i'm a patch guy i'll see if i can get some more uh got a couple projects in uh in your area rick and then mm. uh jared in your area as well coming up yeah. here soon so word on the street is you're gonna be borrowing yeah. my extra mountain bike there you go hey. i'm ready <laughs> well i had a fun um church related you know uh, trick-or-treat sort of event we had a fall festival and uh, I asked for a couple people to help me with a Star Wars booth uh, because I can't just do a cookie cutter booth, you know, like everybody else. I had to make something original from scratch. So after tons of research on the godforsaken wasteland known as Pinterest, 
Um, I pillaged some uh, millennial mom's way overdone birthday party. I took her idea and did it on a budget. And I enlisted a buddy, shout out to Aaron, and one of the teenagers, Reese, who helped me out. Uh, Rick, you got some of these photos here? We yeah. did a we did a Star Wars Jedi training booth hmm. where the idea is like kind of trying to recreate the first yeah, yeah, the one of um of me and the and my friends in the in the costumes, Rick. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I, I busted out the Jedi robes. Please, no comments in the chat about how short my lightsaber is. All right, <laughs> this was for kids. This was for kids. Hey, uh, Jared, just it's just a, it's just the angle. That's it. <laughs> it's just the angle. So, uh, yeah, Aaron and and Reese, one of the teens, he went all out. I mean, he got really into character. He was doing an Obi Wan Kenobi voice and everything. He brought uh, glowing lightsabers. Mine, mine didn't light up. One of the one of the kids said, "Like, does yours glow?" And I was like, "No, mine's you know eight dollars." And they looked at me and they were like, "His glows." You know, <laughs> e, that's I the know. worst. That kid was like three, too. Yeah, they were very critical. So we try to recreate, you know, Yoda's uh, training of Luke on Dagobah. Oh, I thought it's... you were talking about uh, Anakin's recreation of the when he walks up the steps of the Jedi Temple for the last time. No, wrong didn't scene. Do, didn't oh, do that one. Didn't wrong do that scene. One. <laughs> so, so here's what we did. Read right, the so room, we got, Freddy. <laughs> we've got some photos here. We've got some photos. All right. So for the first one is I brought these these blocks, stepping blocks from home. So you had to like balance across the blocks. I know they don't look real oh. Star Warsy, but still, it was like a good little coordination activity. Once you finished that, you had to go across the balance beam. Unfortunately, oh, cool. I forgot to bring the Yoda backpacks, which really would have gone oh, to the next man. level. I could be a but backpack you... while you run. Well, so I'm thinking next year, <laughs> my family and I, we might do seagulls as a costume. Oh, <laughs> um, like like the one That's of the so kids, niche. <laughs> one of the kids could be an actual seagull. Yeah. And then another could be in a backpack on me, and I could go sleeveless. And uh, oh, you know, yeah. we, we could have uh, it, it, possibilities are limitless. We'll see. And then but just play the music like on a boom box. Anyway, mm. so, yeah. so the balance beam, this, this um, uh, is the second stage. Third stage is you had to crawl under this camo net, which was fun. We had some knee protection there, as you can see. The cones, they don't really match the aesthetic, but they were free. Okay. It free. works. And then uh, the fourth stage is you had to memorize the Jedi code. Oh, dude, beautiful! I even had a, a teen come up to me and tell me that the Jedi code was whack, and we should be teaching the gray Jedi code. <laughs> 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 at a J a gray Jedi truther at church. All right, <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, the, it culminated in having to enter the Force Cave and duel. Darth Vader in order to ascend to the rank of Jedi Knight, which meant that you got a piece of candy. And I so. love those Imperial church chairs in the background. <laughs> oh, yeah, very Imperial. <laughs> I'm seeing an OSHA violation right here with no uh, no cup guard. Hopefully there's a cup guard down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, it's thrashing away. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was it was violent. Here's here's my theme when I do like church activities. I want the kids to say, like, nobody in their right mind would do this. Um, I want them to, when, when I'm involved, I want them to be like, Jared will do things that nobody else would allow us to do. So I try to try to swing for the fences in that regard. So Next we had a good Jared, time. Bunch of mirrors, bunch of mirrors, put the kids in there. They have to, you know, when they run forward. <laughs> yeah. Give them a football, we'll football helmet, a mouth guard and <laughs> <laughs> turn them loose. So that's what we were doing last Tuesday in lieu of doing the show. Hope everybody had a great trick-or-treating experience. If you did a Star Wars costume, uh, let us know in the comments or the Legends Look Back Discord channel. But it's no longer Halloween. We have turned the corner into November. We've got all of this month's Legends news to get into. So, Rick, without further ado, let's get this party started. Yep. You have to stall for a second. I'm in the middle of writing a joke to you guys. So, okay, uh, sure. Yeah, no problem. No, um, Rick, let's uh, get this party's... Start it. So good to start the show. <laughs> What's up, everybody, and welcome to Legends Look Back, proudly part of the Utini Podcast Network. This is a Star Wars books podcast for people whose favorite candy is a toss-up. 
between Fun Dip on the one hand and Big League Chew on the other, where we celebrate our rich EU history as well as dive into lesser-known Star Wars classics. I'm your host, Jared Mays, and tonight I am joined by the wonderful, the ironclad, Freddie C. Uh, let's see. I'm more of a Dunkaroos kind of person. I'm not sure if there's a bracket for Dunkaroos. Uh, if I had to pick they between they qualify, but they make the cut. Okay. top five okay. for sure. Good, good. All right, or or the candy that makes sound in your mouth when you bite on it. That one. Mm. Pop rocks? No, that's good too though. We can put that there. <laughs> it, it, I don't even. I'm just moving on. Rick Grace, how are you? <laughs> I'm the award good. winning Rick Grace. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, uh, I'm good. We uh, made the show work. We weren't weren't sure if it was going to happen a while. Had some issues with technology. I'm just going to blame the Jawas and stick with that story. But uh, we're here. That's right. So, hey, Jawas would be a fun costume, except for like, be hard to see because they're pretty dark inside that hood. Uh, <laughs> it could work. Get like we'll get work like 20, 20, 000 lumen lights on your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not totally sure, but it sounds kind of sh- cozy if it was a cold night. One around, <laughs> that's right. We get lots of Utinis. <laughs> oh, yeah, when I watch Star Wars with my kids and uh, the, the Jawas say Utini, they both look at me and point and they're like, That's your thing, <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, <laughs> which is fantastic. I love it. So, uh, uh, guys, we've got some fun news to get into. Personally, I'm a little disappointed because I had a book supposed to arrive today, the mail. Has not or post if you're British, has not delivered mm. it. Um, very disappointed in that. I was hoping to show it off, do one of those big reveals here on the show, but we'll have to save that for another time. So, how about you guys? You got any new things to show off? If not, we can move right along. I'm still waiting for my uh, Haslab uh, ghost ship to come through. So it's gonna take them a bit. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but that's that's what I'm waiting for. That's where. All my money went. <laughs> so you just like check the front porch every day. You're like, is it here today? All the time. All the time. I hang out there like <laughs> an old man on my uh, on my rocking chair from Cracker Barrel. Mm. Just waiting. waiting oh, I, love, I love me some Cracker Barrel, man. They got some <laughs> retro stuff in there. Yeah. For yeah, they do. sure. Rick, how about you? I know you've been trying to do the frugal thing these days. Any new books? You know, I got <clears throat> figures. I've got something that, that um, money can't buy. Got wisdom, oh, oh. what and, and love, love, yeah, <laughs> contentment and and yeah, nothing new to show. The, or your medals, and free candy. Thing. We're hard, yeah. one, hard got, one medals. No, I don't have much free candy because my my super sweet child keeps giving it away to every single person he sees, and like he doesn't realize that this whole parent tax has to come through. Like he's he's <laughs> he's, he's he's missing. Like he's spending his gross income, not his net, you know. And so we're gonna have to talk about that but he, he's being really kind so i appreciate it i guess yeah absolutely <sighs> kid. well I we i did not get the new empire omnibus in the mail today that is what i'm expecting in fact i'm pretty sure i'm getting two delivered on accident nice. so maybe we'll maybe we'll give one away on the channel we could do some sort of a contest but no guarantees yet we'll see we're just gonna wait and see if i get two if so somebody's getting the lucky day <laughs> Courtesy of Dr. Corey Holton, hopefully, if he reimburses me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get uh, a High Republic omnibus. I'll keep this Ooh. quick because it's not, it's not Legends. But I do love this right here, okay? When you pull off the dust jacket and then the reveal is it's got oh, the nice. printed on cover. The Drin gear is ready to eat some meat like he's at a barbecue in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Come on. So that's phase one. Yes. Who is the uh, artist of... Oh, the... you, I'm not prepared to talk about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Ario We've Anandito. got Jacob in the chat. He might know. Yeah, I think I got the Anandito cover. But who did the who did the art on the actual printed on? This wasn't something I was planning on sharing. So <laughs> it's nice. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, I love these om- Omnibuy though. This one's uh, skinnier than some of the big fat legends ones. So mm. excited. That sounds like me. Okay. Yeah. Confirmed. Ario Anandito. Shout out to Jacob. Jacob's nice. a real one. Yeah. Thanks, Jacob. So, guys, I'm picked up on the big fat legend one. That's okay. Yeah, sorry. Let's talk about the Omnibuy that are, however, in the Legends universe. Mm. Freddie, hit us up with the Empire Omnibus Volume Two arriving to a porch near me and possibly near you. Yes. Legends, look (laughs) out! Released October 31st, we've got the Empire Omnibus Volume Two, 
which yes, it's on its way. Uh, and it collects a, a fairly lengthy amount of, of collections here. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to read every single one of these, but you can just hit the high points. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm going to hop through it. Uh, we've got Dark Times, Fire Carrier 135. We've got Droid Special, number one. Uh, it looks like we've got almost all of the droids specials here uh, from 94 and 95. Uh, let's see, uh, Falling Star, Star Wars Tales 15. There's a lot. I, I, oh, the you know, Darth Vader uh, in the Ninth Assassin and Cry of Shadows. Those are both really good. Yes, and you've got number one rated Star Wars droids, R2's Day Out. Uh, number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to get this because, let's be honest, I've not read a whole lot of these stories. They're, they're kind of a, a smorgasbord, if you will. Yes. Of yeah, Star Wars stories, a lot of bits and pieces of different different uh, collections. Rick, are Borgs a Star Trek thing? I was <laughs> just thinking that. Yeah, like that could be a great like. Uh... The, the name's Borg. Schmorgas Borg. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, I know nothing about them, nor do I want to know. So please mute you yourself. Live in a Moving cube. on. <laughs> Resistance is is futile. <laughs> I've heard that before. I've heard yep. that. I'm going to re re resist, though. So, yeah, this one, we've got two covers, Rick, if you can find them. Uh, covers by Felipe Massafera, who did the Vader cover, and Killian Plunkett did the droids cover. And we're about to play a fun game, which is called Which One Did I Order? We'll find out soon. <laughs> nice. So here's the droids one. Oh, yes. By Plunkett. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. I like that cover. It's got a good tinsel. You've even... You've even got the uh, yeah the eye eyeball droid. Uh, oh yeah, on Jabba's castle. Jabba to Pinky. I love that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then this um, this is pretty good too. Yeah, I That's love a nice that. Piece. Yeah, Vader in the cockpit of his. Uh, what do you call that ship? The X one prototype. Tie advanced. <laughs> I tried. Uh, what is this? What is this point of view? Is this like the point of view of his? Like his like control. Yeah, like his, his controller. Well, yeah, there it's on his, he's on his phone while he's driving. Yeah. He <laughs> accidentally selfie. turned on the selfie camera. Yeah. <laughs> while he was trying to text oh, no. Palpatine. No. He was running late. <laughs> he That's just... why he crashed the ship. It had nothing to do with Han Solo. <laughs> Saw the Death Star get blown up. and yep. Oh, man. So there's one that was just released. Many people uh, are still awaiting theirs to arrive. However, we've got some still on the horizon. Legends Epic Collections, two of them, a pair, an Empire and a New Republic, perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Uh, the Legends Epic Collection, The Empire Volume 8, is coming out November 14th, right around the corner. Uh, this has got Empire, a, a random smattering of Empire issues. Why? I don't know. You'll find out when you read it. It's got Empire number 5, 6, 8 through 13, and 15. Rogue Squadron number 1 half. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Clearly. You'll never know. Clearly. <laughs> and Tag and Bink are dead, number one. Uh, and then a random smattering of material from Star Wars Tales. So mm -hmm. this sounds like it's going to just be like a, a, one of those, like, feels like a sampler. Spirit, in the spirit of Halloween, like a box of chocolates, right? Yes. Hmm. Um, so this is number eight? Correct. Of and the Empire. After this is the, oh, okay, I see, collection. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. The other one's an omnibus. Okay. This is an epic collection. Another epic collection, New Republic Volume 7, coming out on December 5th. Collects uh, some some great, some of my all-time favorite Star Wars comics, these Boba Fett one-shots. Yeah. Bounty on Barcuda, which Agent one time, Freddy, we did an episode ages ago, <laughs> and you tried to describe the plot of this to me. And <laughs> when you finished, I said, I'm going to be honest with you, man, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how it was and when you, I read it. <laughs> you re-rolled it, and you tried to describe it to me all over again, and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> it's so, it's so weird. Just it check is. it out. <laughs> There's a magician involved. <laughs> yes, Boba Fett Trojan horses his way into a cell of smugglers or pirates or something. Yeah, huts. There's huts. Yeah. So Jacob. bounty on Barcuda. Uh, when the fat lady swings, murder most foul agent of doom. It's got uh, Jedi Academy Leviathan, which is a great little uh, mini series tie in to the Jedi Academy books, and then uh, Union, uh, the Chewbacca stories, and uh, a couple of other odds and ends. I'm excited for this one. This yeah. that's got some great stories. We'll need a Cosmic Force review of uh, Bounty on Barcuda. 
Oh, Absolutely. for sure. All those Cam Kennedy Boba Fett one shots. Those are my. Oh, hey, I've got an action figure. Hold on. And Jared's going to get his action figure now. Oh, he just God, walked away. It's... He just walked away. He did a bend and snap right now. I just accidentally <laughs> severed Boba Fett from his package. I'm going to have to glue this thing back on. Oh, my but, goodness. Yeah, they made they made a uh, an action figure of the Cam Kennedy nice. Boba Fett from these comics. The This one's from Death, Lies, and Treachery, which is not one of these four. But close enough. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So those are some epic collections. Freddie, we also had something really exciting uh, hit the airwaves of the Twitter sphere today. Tell the good folks about the article from Dork Side of the Ah, Force. yes, yes. Uh, this so this was posted on on the Twitterverse or whatever we're calling that. Uh, apologies, I'm just not in the news with it, and I know there's some controversy and name there's changes. A letter. And yeah, it's a letter now. Uh, so I guess that's that's it. But anyway. That verse, uh, not to be confused with the metaverse, that's a separate entity, anyway. <laughs> There's a website that did a write up, and we're on yes. the list. Dork side of the force. First of all, thank you all for, for writing up, uh, uh, in my opinion, a really nice article on the most positive legends podcasts on uh, that exist, uh, that the dork side force is aware of, at least. and. There's a good amount of folks on here, and I, I feel like we should, we should, uh, we should, uh, let's see here. Should I read it, Jer yeah. Uh, Jared? Yeah. Or, okay. yeah. So, okay. so we got, we got one paragraph here. There's five of them. I'm familiar with uh, another couple of these shows. Uh, Tear out the dork side. We're thankful for the write up. I'm familiar with now. This is lit, the podcast that's mentioned on there. Uh, yeah. Meg, formerly of Legends Look Back, she and her husband, Devor, do that show. It's great. So, uh, we're on the list with them, which is cool. Kind of like the universe is converging yeah. once again for a second. But, uh, the write up is, it's kind of fun. So go ahead, Freddie. Sure. All right. Legends Look Back is hosted by Jared, Freddie, Emily, and Rick, and they are part of the Utini Network. This group takes on extended universe and expanded. Uh, expanded. expanded. Sorry, sorry. Expanded. They said extended, but yeah. I, can't, I can't sit by idly, Freddie. <laughs> it does say extended. The expanded universe. Even as I said it, I was like, "That's uh, that doesn't feel right." Yeah, uh, you're gonna make my eye twitch again, man. <laughs> <laughs> and Legends books, uh, and easily presents them for us all to learn. They also have a nice dash of humor, too. Ah. Dash Rindar of humor. You know. Dash hey. Rindar. Yeah. One particular enjoyment for me was they openly share their love for collectibles, uh, such as Funko Pops and hard to find Legends hardcover books. Uh, while available in an audio medium, their show is also on the Utini YouTube channel. In HD, baby. That's HD. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That's, that's very that's a great write up. That's very nice to hear. That's we like to have can, a little bit you can of. You tell humor. they actually know what they're talking about, which is cool. Uh, yeah, they actually next listen. Next time, maybe ma naked palps can make it in the write up. That would be fun. That would, yeah. <laughs> that might be the dash of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Rick, segment us into a special segment that we're going to call uh, Toy Talk Live in HD. Toy Talk Live in HD. Man, what was that like? Uh, it was like a whole <laughs> whole brand of like, in HD. I, I can't stop <laughs> myself in HD. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so yeah, uh, let's talk about some toys. Uh, there is a Black Series combo pack for The Last Command, recently announced uh, from Hasbro. Uh, and so there are some spoilers for The Last Command with this release. It's yeah. a... Uh, a multi-figure pack featuring Luke, his evil clone, Luke, <laughs> Mara Jade, and Jarus Sabaoth. Jarus. 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 Now, I can never say it. Jarus is how I say yeah. it, but you know, you don't have to be as seamless and flawless as me. Uh, oh. there, there were there was some controversy about this because at first it sounded like it was gonna be a three pack. Ooh. Two Lukes and Mara, which like we already had those figures, and people were like, "Where's my Sabai?" <laughs> Other than right here, yeah. Hey, there he <laughs> yeah, there he is. But I wore my Sabioth shirt, Sabioth shirt tonight, uh, folks who are on audio. Um, then finally, somebody did some researching. They did a little bit of digging, asking the the Hasbro folks, and then we had an update, which was Sabioth is there too, so we can recreate this glorious scene from the end of the last command 
with Mara dueling Sabayath and uh, Luke du dueling Luke. This stuff is so wacky, I can't even say it with a straight face. Which one's the clone? What Luke with the with the blue with the, with blue. the blue? Okay, because that one was from his severed hand, right? That was yeah. cloned. So why is Mara reaching toward him? Well, she's okay. just she's know. looking like a damsel in distress, which she's not. But and she wants it's... to kill him. Yeah. But yeah, spoiler alert. Besides that, I hope that <laughs> she it... wants to. I'm hoping that it's cloth, like the cloth robes. It'd be nice to have some soft cloth oh, yeah. robes. Uh, and I bet you anything, under those soft robes, you got a six pack. Oh yeah, even better if, if the the six pack is revealable. <laughs> <laughs> oh I, man, I'm, that is. I'm excited for this. Rip. Hopefully, it's not too expensive. I do think it's one of the greatest marketing moves they could have possibly made, which is yeah. you've already got a Luke uh, <laughs> sculpt, so all you have to do is put another Luke sculpt in there <laughs> except for you give him a little scowl with his eyebrows and get a blue lightsaber and and so it's just it's a it's that's the that's the kind of marketing that we in the biz call smarketing okay smarketing. <laughs> smart that is smart marketing. i uh i just got inspiration okay um coming to a trunk retreat near you next year oh yes dude is gonna be redneck jeru sabayoth who to the church people looks like moses <laughs> yeah <laughs> know, where are you moses Rip moses <laughs> no 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 he's just gonna be fat like like fat thor it'll be fat jeru oh, okay. <laughs> you'll be redneck right right right, right and right. just myself so yeah he let himself go <laughs> out there on wayland uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic it could happen maybe we'll see we'll see so excited for this what over under a hundred dollars guys how much do you think this is gonna cost Ooh. well it's a four pack right uh six pack six pack <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes it's a four pack oh, of man. figures that's right uh, uh yeah it's gonna start out at um start the bidding at a hundred dollars in hd yeah it'll start i think at 120 for sure or 140 now okay I'm probably 113. That's my guess. 113. Yeah. Yeah. I think 120 is going to be the starting point and then an on sale price of, of 100. And then eventually it'll be clearance at GameStop for like 70. Mm, Rick, did you bring your that. prices right wheel over there? <laughs> oh, no. I can pull that up. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there's one more uh, addition for our segment of Toy Talk. Mm. And this is pretty exciting, unless you already own one of these, in which case you're probably mad, bro. <laughs> and that is Freddy. We're going to have a new Funko Pop to put on the shelves. Yes. Who yes. We got? Look at that. That's that's a pretty decent. That's a pretty decent uh, Thrawn right there. That's if you showed me if I saw that without knowing that this was Thrawn. Uh, I mean, it's Thrawn. Uh, it, it's a, it, you could tell it's it's what's his face. Uh, it's his sculpt. It looks more like like the actor. Definitely some harsh features there. Oh, with the Lars hairline. Mikkelsen. Lars Mikkelsen. Yeah, you yeah, can see his the features blue. there. You got the blue skin, you got the red eyes, and he's got a gun, so don't cross him. Yeah, um, it's nice. It, it's, there's supposedly going to be another Thrawn as well, though I couldn't find a picture of it. So, some new Thrawn Funkos. You don't have to spend four hundred dollars anymore. <sighs> Just to clarify, that was new, not nude. Yeah, ah, difference. Right. But man, those eyes. I will though. not be buying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> From the yeah. makers of Naked Palps, bring you. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for this though because I've wanted to throw on Funko for forever, and that's nice. Yeah, haven't been able to get my hands on the OG, which is not cheap. But guys, before we wrap it up tonight, we've got enough time for another edition of Eric's Stupid Game Legends Edition. Boop, boop, um, boop, boop, boop. Not affiliated with Eric Eilerson of the Living Force, formerly of the Living Force, soon to be the Utini Show. I don't know if they've got a name yet. Anyway, um, long story short, we've got a game, guys. Here's what we're gonna do. All right. Um, Go ahead and search your archives for your volumes while I vamp here for a second. We are going to do a fun game everybody uh, at home can play along with us as well. And that is, we are each going to take a turn reading the first line of a Legends book. Uh, and then the other two hosts have to guess what is that book. Um, after however many rounds we are going to do, whoever has the most points wins. Okay, clear, question. Are we doing the first... The f if there's like a preface, are we doing the preface or the first chapter? Um, yeah, the the preface would count unless the preface is like Pablo Hidalgo waxing <laughs> poetic about 
the Brian Daly books or something. Like it actually yeah. has to be part of the story from the author. So it can't be one of those little one paragraph blurbs, you know, in the first. It's on content the first page, it right? Right. That's it. Yeah. So here, here's a practice round. You guys ready? This is a this is a softball. Are we just doing first sentence? So like the, the first sentence until the first period. Yeah, or exclamation point. Okay. Or question mark. Okay. Or ellipses. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first line. Here we go. Uh, here's and make sure your book is out of frame. So practice round, and we'll give everybody along at home in the YouTube comments just enough time to get your guesses in as well. Guys, no peeking. Are you ready? Here we go. You're good, Corin, but you're no Luke Skywalker. <laughs> oh. That's so easy. Rogue Squadron. Yeah. Name that book. <laughs> Rogue Squadron. All right. So that's the practice round. Way to go. Okay. Nice. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. I, I was actually that thinking. One. That one signed by Stackpole. <laughs> I was I thinking I Jedi, so that would have actually been a uh... okay. Yeah, Rick wins the practice round. Oh no, was... Freddy. Sorry, I got to say, that. like Freddy. Was... Okay. Um. All right. Didn't count though. That was practice round. What do you say, guys? Are we ready? Oh yeah, I'm sure. ready. This... Okay. Here we go. Can't promise. Uh, oh, can, oh, do I get? Can I do one or or? Uh... Yeah. So we're each gonna take okay. a turn okay, reading. Cool. It, while the other two guess. So I'm going to lead us off. Rick, do you have a scoreboard? Yep. Okay. So here we go. This is the first sentence of a book. It's a legend. So book. hold on. Do we like buzz in to like guess or just shout it out? How are we doing that? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me I'm see very a hand. Let so. me see a hand. Get the hand up in front of the face. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see him wave around okay. and uh, do do one of those dances like in Nice the Old Republic that you have to do in the cantina. Okay. Um, here we go. I almost read the title. Nope, don't do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> First line of the book. General Han Solo stood at the command console viewport of the Mon Calamari star cruiser, Mon Ramonda. Ooh, that's a tough one. Is this... Uh... There's nothing there to give it away. Other than, like, you could... You general, could, okay, he's general, so he's yeah. still, he's fighting uh, Imperials. Hmm. General Han Solo stood at the command console viewport of the Mon Calamari. Is this Star an X-wing cruiser. book? I, well, I can't give you. I can't. Like, <laughs> I have events. a. I have a guess. Go All ahead, right, Rick. Rick's got a guess. <clears throat> is it Jedi Search? Eh, no, this Dang is a it. tough one. I should not have started with this. Hey, I'm not giving you guys any mercy, so it's fine. You're in the right era. You're in the right era for sure. All right. <sighs> any guesses, Freddy? Going Mon once. Ramona. Going twice. We've got a guess in the chat. I'm about to read it. Go Ooh. ahead. We'll give it to a point right. in the chat. Skuma if, if... Joe has it correct, which ah! is the courtship of Princess Leia. Oh, okay. no, not that one. Yeah, the courtship of Princess Leia. Way to go. Um, nice. It was his nice. second guess, so I don't know if he gets the point. But he still, gets half a point. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, so and according charge, to Skuma. Yeah, he yeah, knew there that you go. Khan was in charge of the Mon Ramonda in this book. That's there awesome. That's, awesome. That's a level of attention to detail. Well, I, that's you know, cool. that's something I would have picked up on. I just haven't read those yet. So, but uh, uh, you're in for a treat, man. I love that book. I was yeah. selling a friend on it yesterday. I was like, listen to this. It introduces the Night Sisters, but more importantly, C3PO sings a song called <laughs> Han Solo, What a Man Solo. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Rick, you are going to read the next one. Okay, do we want an easy one or a hard one or just just pick? How how many are we yeah. doing? Let's let's start let's start a little start a little easy. I was thinking we do ten total. Okay, okay. All right, let's see. So that was one. Um. <clears throat> All right. Directly ahead, the star was a marble sized yellow orange ball. Its intensity moderated by its distance and by the viewport's automatic sunscreens. Oh shoot! There's nothing here to give that away. No, oh my, not. this is good. Hold on. This isn't this... no, that's not I Jedi. That's different. I think this is a guess based on one word and one word only. Are you ready? Sure. The crystal star. <laughs> yeah. They had a one in 167 chance of getting that right. <laughs> yeah. I, this is not, not <laughs> that <laughs> easy. The book's easy, but the uh the line is definitely no context. You have a guess, Freddy? Uh I really cannot guess this one. Yeah, it's. I wish I had better context. This is uh, Dark Force Rising. 
Oh, uh, why okay. just after after ten rounds have zero zero to zero? <laughs> <laughs> that would be epic. Oh. I think mine. I think I might have picked an easy one, but we'll see. All right, you're up next, Freddie. Okay. Uh, I at least I thought this was easy. I picked it up and I felt like it was. We'll see if it is. All right. Uh, they were now only a kilometer above the surface of the planet, coming in with a rush. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Right, Rick's got a guess. I'm gonna guess Truza Bakura. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were now only. Say it again. They were now only a kilometer above the surface of the planet coming in with a rush uh i'd like to request you read the next sentence <laughs> okay how about how about i read the first chapter maybe that'll do something to uh we don't have time for that but maybe the first like two or three sentences okay okay you ready too fast han slowed them using the brake thrusters roughly huh. g-forces seized him and he felt as though something were squeezing his chest in a giant vice oh Oh, G forces um, a Star Wars story. No, <laughs> is this? Uh, is this one of the solo books, like one of the Crispin books? Uh, yes, it is. Good guess. Um, I'm gonna give Rick the points for this one, even if he doesn't get it totally right. <laughs> I can't remember the book names right now. Uh, let's see, Hut Game at Paradise Snare, and uh, oh, he, he said it. He already I said, said it. it. What is Paradise one of the? Snare. Paradise Snare. <laughs> right. Rick gets a point for that, no Yay. doubt. I was not going to get there. Nice. Well done, Rick. Okay. Here's the tough one. I was really proud of the choice on this next book. However, the first sentence is almost nothing. <laughs> so uh, you're pretty much screwed. All right. <laughs> this is the sentence. Are you ready for this? I'll I'm give you more than ready. just the sentence. But here, here's the, here's the first sentence. A light rain misted the hillside. That's the sentence. <laughs> Dip of <words>. lava. <laughs> a light rain misted the hillside. I'll read a little more. Other than that slight patter, the only sound disturbing the evening was the sudden cry of the Pico Pico. Oh, so you're on Naboo. The large, blue-skinned Reptavian's pitiful squawk carried across the still lake before stopping as suddenly as it all began. The tusk cats must be hunting. I'm going to stop there before I give anything else away. That sounds like Naboo. Okay. Keep My going first with that. thought was um, uh, a new dawn under the void, but um, Naboo. Hmm. Let me ask you this question. What book really loves to describe the biology of animals? Oh, is this? Uh, oh, <laughs> this is uh, uh, um, Dantooine. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> ruins it. Ruins Freddy Freddy got it. Freddy, Freddy, Freddy got, got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> I was writing off of Freddy that entire time anyway, so I was going to give it to him. Pico. That's right. <laughs> I was like, hold on, we're talking about animals. <laughs> Naboo. <laughs> got oh, it. Oh boy. Got it. Or Rory. I think it might be Rory. Either way. All right, you are up next, Freddy. Okay. You ready? Yes, sir. Above a dead world, one habitable moon hung suspended like a cloud-veiled turquoise. Above a dead world. Holy smokes. Read it again. Dead world? Above a dead world, one habitable moon hung suspended like a cloud-veiled turquoise. Is habitable a word? Is it habitable? It's habitable, probably. Habitable. Um, habitable. <laughs> habitable. Yoda, Yoda Dark Rendezvous. No. Yeah, I said that. I said habitable like I was habitable. walking. Yeah, it's habitable. habitable moon. <laughs> Above a dead world. Okay, so you said Dark Rendezvous. I think that's a solid guess. Is that right? It is not correct. Okay, okay, okay. Dead Let me world. Know if I need to read I'm a thinking like something a little bit dark and horror y. Um, I feel like it could be Death Troopers. Ooh. Mm, good choice, but not quite. All right. I, do you want me to read more? This is yeah, beautiful. Yeah. This Keep is going. a beautiful chapter. Okay. The eternal hand that held the chain of its orbit had dusted its velvet backdrop with, a, with brilliant stars and cosmic energies danced in the wrinkles of space time, singing their timeless music, singing their timeless music, neither noticing nor caring 
for the Empire, the Rebel Alliance, or their beef, pe- brief, petty wars. Their beef wars? Brief. Their beef okay. wars. <laughs> Beast wars. <laughs> Robots in disguise. <laughs> Isn't um, that beautiful? <laughs> that is beautiful. That is a really well-written a, yeah. description that has left me dumbfounded and in a stupor of disbelief that I know nothing about Star Wars, apparently. Mm. What can yeah. I mean? This is hard. So I said Rebel Alliance, Empire. Uh, what is that well written from that era? I'm looking at the shelf. Looking at the shelf. I got nothing. What is it? <sighs> Any guesses, Rick? No. Dang. No got way, me. dude. No <laughs> way. Should have just gone with it again. We're looking at the truce at Bakura, listeners. That is exactly uh, it. And it's not the handshake version. It's the weird version. It's, oh, get that whoa. off the screen. That abomination. <laughs> that's why I couldn't yeah. guess it. It didn't have the glorious handshake. The, that's right. exactly it. That's exactly it. It's a beautiful oh, okay. It's a beautiful entry. It, it leaves you stunned. I can imagine seeing it on a big screen. I'm going to talk well to written. Kathy. That was very well written. That's right. If anybody knows, anybody got any connections with Kathy, let's get her on the show. All right, you're up, Rick. What do you have? Okay, let's see. All right, here's here's a good one. Um, <clears throat> this one might be easy. Might be. Wim Nictor stood just outside the circle, awaiting first blood. Wim Nick. Oh, oh, circle. Okay, okay. Uh, which one has circle? Uh, it could be crimson. Empire, that's a comic, so this is not it, unless you're throwing us for a loop, which I don't think you are. Circle. Mall lockdown. No. Dang it. <laughs> Say it again, Rick. Wim Nictor stood just outside the circle, Wim. awaiting first blood. What did you say, Jared? Mall lockdown. Because they Shadow like, Hunter. They they fight in the the, the Wim. The Who's pits. Wim from? No idea. Never heard it before. You have, I promise. I'm sure I have because I've read every single Star Wars book. <laughs> let me, let me, uh, let me, let me go some more. Um, I don't know Wim. if this will help at all. The cold morning air of the Odacer Faustin tasted like ozone, numbing his tongue and lips, making his heart pound harder in his chest until it actually shook the heavy fabric of his wind resistant tunic. Now I gave nothing. Um, uh, okay, so, so, could be. Wim, uh, is this is wind resistant tunic? Is this um? You wanna yeah. you wanna hint? Huh. Yeah. This feels ho- horror-y, sort of. Uh, yeah, your oh, your hint oh, is. Oh, oh, it's dark. Red Harvest. <laughs> it is Red, Red Harvest. Harvest. Good one. There it is. So Jared's on the board. I was it's got just that dark. about to say, I'm tired of looking at that goose egg on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. I've got another one. Can I go? <laughs> I do remember him from that book. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, okay. I've got a really hard one. Should I save that for later or just, just, just go? Yeah. Save it. We'll, we'll do one more round okay. before. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who's next? Yeah. I'll, I've got one. Okay. This one's, this one's fairly basic. So you guys be quick on the draw. Ready? Captain Pillion, a voice called down the port side crew pit through the hum of background sound. conversation. Rick's got his hand up. Heir to the Empire. Heir to the Empire Woo-hoo. is it. That was good. Good job, Rick. Thank you. Captain Pillion. Yeah. That's love it. I love it. Yep. All right. Ready. All right. Here we go. Just to be clear, do the other covers of Truce of Bakura have different opening lines? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe not. They do not. All right. Chapter one. I feel like if I bring this book up higher, it might show the... Here it is. Okay. Oh, I just the... found a bookmark. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I find the Utini bookmarks in all of my <laughs> books just randomly. Okay. Mine's mine's an old uh, airport ticket. Airport, <laughs> nice. airport ticket. Faded away too, I bet. Yeah, pretty, pretty oh, much. Yeah. But not Oxidized. quite. I was going to Atlanta that day, as I always am, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> all right. 
The star lines collapsed into stars, and the Imperial Star Destroyer Dominator had arrived. That's a great first line. Dominator. Dang. Dominator. The star Dominator. line. Star lines collapsed into stars. So that's classic uh, Star Wars book talk for for hyperspace. Um, the Dominator, though, Rick, you're a ship's guy. You're googling it. I can see you. I'm googling not. That, I'm not Rick. googling. I watched you Google it. I'm not googling it. I promise. <laughs> Hands where I can see him, my friend. Above the pant line. Do- Dominator. <laughs> Dominator. Um, uh, is it a, a Hand of Thrawn duology book? It is not. Okay. But I'm thinking it's a, I'm thinking it's a Zahn book because he starts every book on a Star Destroyer. So, As you should. So it could, <laughs> could be. And you, Jared, you're accurate. <laughs> accurate. It's a Thrawn. It's, it's a Zahn oh, book, there. so it's not a Hand of Thrawn. So Survivor Quest. Choices of one. No, not quite. Dang it. Uh, up on flight? No, not up. Allegiance. Flight. Not Thank allegiance. Government. All right, what well, song books are left? It's not true. Sub- okay, <laughs> scoundrels. Ah, oh, I forgot yes! about scoundrels. <laughs> Dang, it. This is my fourth guess. I'll take it. The Dominator. <laughs> yes, I remember that now. Golly. Ah. Okay, this is so hard. <laughs> so Jared, you're at two now, I guess. Yeah, I'll take that one. I'll take it for sure. That was good. You you knew the fact, uh, or Timothy Zahn's uh, writing pattern there. That was nice. Does he have a calling card for real? This is great. Yeah, he starts every book on a Star Destroyer. Oh, man. Whose turn is it? My turn? Yes, sir. Okay. This is my hard one. Are you ready? Yes. No mercy. You. The rules were first sentence. Okay. So here is the complete sentence. All right. Rick's going to do something. I can feel it. Tatooine. (laughs) (laughs) You scoundrel. I know this one. No way. You got it? Jared, just go ahead and try to figure it it out. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Crucible. (laughs) No. (laughs) Crucible. No. Yeah. They start. There is the book opens, if I remember correctly, with Han, Luke, and Leia in the most Eisley Cantina. With Tatooine. Is with the way the last book okay. in in the uh, Legends ended was the big three in a cantina. Hmm. But then it doesn't end there. It gets really wacky. All right. Uh could be Tatooine Ghost. <laughs> It'd be. Freddie, do you have a guess? I do have a guess. And uh just want to say Skuma Joe has is close, but not quite. He said Star Wars 77. <laughs> uh it's not the first Star Wars. That came out, but it is the first Star Wars. What? Number one. Dude! What is it? <laughs> the Phantom Menace novelization. <laughs> yes, sir! <laughs> no way. Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, man. That's uh, It's Tatooine. Right there. Right on the spot. Right, right there. How many Star Wars books take place on Tatooine? Like, 50? <laughs> You Googled it. You Googled it. No, you can't no, Google that because all you would Google is the word Tatooine. Which is... I did not Google that. Y'all are messaging Tatooine. each other in Slack, aren't you? That was it. Yep. So Rick, Rick put you on, Jared. Rick put you on. He goes, I'm just going to say Tatooine. It's going to be Phantom Menace. Got it. Let's watch Jared freak out. You, you do. <laughs> The way you two are squirming over there, I can see something was going on. But that seriously I I can't is. Read your body language. You're kidding yourself, Mister. <laughs> that really is the first sentence, though. Is just Tatooine. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Terry Brooks, good, great author. Yep. Okay. So I don't know. Should we give it to give it to Freddie? He said no, the don't, words. Don't so. give it to me. That was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> but right, it was fun. last round. Last round. Last round. Here we go. I've got one. Uh, in in this, I, I don't need the. I'll explain it later. Here's the sentence. Ready. Jason grasped the lightsaber, feeling its comforting weight against his sweaty palms. Yeah, I'm not going to get this because I haven't read anything with with Jason other than mentions. I could guess uh, an era, but uh, yeah. Give me a give me a book series. Yeah, I mean, new, good New Jedi Order, but I need more specific uh, than that. Okay, not New Jedi Order. Fate of the Jedi. The 
No, oh, it's Freddy's turn to guess. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't know these these uh, Jason, Jaina. I I know a few of them, right? Vector, Prime, and and whatnot. But I haven't read much more than that besides comic books. All right, give me. A, I'm give out me of my book, league here. Give me a book series. It's not New Jedi Order, but it does have Jason Solo. What could it be? Why? What could Jay it be? King? Going once. There it is. Okay, it is. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna give the points okay. to Skuma Joe, not to Fred. Yeah, don't That's give it right. to me. So Skuma Joe is also tied two to two with me and Rick. Is that what Skuma said? <laughs> oh, Let me open this tab. Which is oh. Young Jedi Knights. This one was specifically from book two, The Shadow Academy. But I was just gonna, if you got the book series, I would have would have given it to you. Nice. I man, I almost started reading those. I'm still doing the Junior Jedi Knights right now. Yeah, those are fantastic. All right, almost done here. Uh, Freddie, you've got a book for us. Sure, let's do it. And if if this is gonna be this this will be winner take all between me and Rick. Oh boy. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna read chapter one because I feel like the preface is just too obvious. Oh, Skuma says he has three points, so game's over. Ah. He wins. <laughs> yeah, guys. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't even know. He's not keeping count. Heard. <laughs> oh, fantastic! What you think the first sentence is too obvious in this book? They're both they're both very specific. You're, it's going to be obvious uh, which I think which series. But anyway, I mean, that, I, I I wouldn't mind something obvious after some of the tough ones we've had. <laughs> okay, sure, let's do it. All right. I'm not going to get it. Be All quick right. on the draw. Even before his X-wing sensors had time to scan and identify the new ship, Corin Horn knew it was trouble. He just knew it. Born I knew, knew it. he was trouble when he walked in. All right. Uh, could be. It can't be Rogue Squadron. So it's got to either be. It's got to either be Wedges Gamble, Krytos Trap, Back to War, or I Jedi. I'm holding I Jedi. I'm checking for it. Er, it's not I Jedi. So I'm gonna guess. You can't use your resources. <laughs> Disqualification. I was Disqual holding the book. I was holding. That doesn't the mean you get to look at it. I'm holding the keyboard, but I'm not typing them. I invented answers. this game. I make the rules. Uh, and <laughs> the my guess is Wait, just gamble. The back to war. Okay, you it? ready? Yes. Three. Drum roll. Two. Dang it! Wedges gamble. And who would have thought that just as we began the episode, we end with once again Rick winning some hardware. Is Crowned the champion. <laughs> Rick Good job, wins. Rick. Yeah, well a, done. Yes, but thank you. I concede defeat with muy muy humility and respect. No, I, I totally guessed, so you probably should have earned that one. I just said it first, so <laughs> you said it. You said it. You, you I, I said it, man. Gotta feel better about that one though. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. And I Skuma. We already got it too, so uh, Skuma is the real winner here. Speaking of Skuma, Four points. being speaking being a winner here, and of I Jedi, which I was holding, uh, that was my next <laughs> pick. Should we need it? We don't. However, we're going to be reading this as our next roundtable book here for Legends. Look back here in the month of December. We've got Emily scheduled to do an episode with us. Who? Uh, long have I waited? Yes. Uh, making <laughs> her Emily. grand return to yes. Legends. Look back for <sighs> some riveting. I Jedi content. In fact, we asked CEO book. Dr. Corey Helton, and he said, get off my doorstep. <laughs> so we got Emily instead. Uh, we're going to be talking about I Jedi. And guys, we've got something phenomenal to show. That is some custom fan art from none other than Skuma Joe himself. In fact, he's leveled up with this. He's now Skuma Joseph with this artwork. <laughs> Skuma Joseph. <laughs> like it. He you ready? has created some yeah some i jedi fan art mm -hmm. Look yeah at that's nice beautiful love thing it xr coon's glowing forehead <laughs> yes and the <laughs> orabesh oh man that's nice and you've got and, uh, uh nintendo corin steel like, <laughs> yeah corin looking like Nar naruto over here <laughs> there you go i know nothing about naruto so maybe it's more of a Avatar: The Last Airbender thing that works. Yeah, fantastic. Well some done. Pterodactyls. I think we should have Skuma Joe commission some custom Legends Look Back artwork of some sort. I don't know what yet, but yeah, yeah. I think 
I think we, we've had, we'll have something in the making. So uh, love it's that. Sweet. If you want to follow along at home, everybody uh, follow along by reading all 400 and no, 500 and ow, 77 pages of I Jedi. It's a good book. That's going to do it for this week. <laughs> Here on the Legends Look Back, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you especially to our incredible patrons uh, for your support on the show, uh, especially to Brian Dooley, Q, Carl Sanders, Zach W, Michael Fry, and Raymond Pazinski on our Jedi High, High Council, huh. as well as James T, Ashley Ingalls, Colton Fife, Chris Carrizo, and Sally and Chris Eilerson on our Alliance High Command as well remember to sub to the channel and leave us a review in your podcast platform of choice if you'd like your thoughts read on the show our contact information can be found in the description below leave us one of those likes the subs ring that bell on youtube helps other folks to find the show just like you did remember we are on twitter at legends look back and remember everybody to keep the utini fan code and be a force for positivity in the fandom may the force be with you <laughs>